Welcome back to Bougie Comfort Food. I'm your hostess, Mary Landry. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right, guys, I've got another great recipe for you today. Today is taco soup. Now, that may sound a little strange to some folks, but trust me, it tastes like you're eating a taco in a bowl. It's fantastic. You don't have all of the chips and the bread and everything else you might have with the taco. So, this is a super, super easy recipe. And it's one that you're just going to fly through. All right, now the first things first. We have a pound of ground beef, browned and drained. We're going to put that into our pot. All righty, there we go. Next, you're going to add two large cans. I use Bush's Pinto beans. We are not sponsored by Bush, but Bush's beans are the most consistent. Now, you're not adding any water to this recipe, so understand all the stuff in the can is your water for your soup. All right. There's one can. And two cans. Now, this is a good way, moms out there, to sneak in vegetables for your little fries because it is a way to sneak them into them. The next thing we're going to add is two cans of corn. And like I said, with, with the water in the can, two whole cans of corn. All right. The next thing we're going to add is um, a can of Rotel. Um, I use the no salt added because I have somebody on a cardiac diet and we try to cut salt everywhere we can, but you can use any of them you want. If you want this to be a little extra spicy, put extra spicy in there. If you like it mild, get the mild. If you're okay with the original, do that one. Next thing is diced tomatoes in tomato juice. Now, if you like the cut of the Rotel, you can use petite diced tomatoes, which is what I usually use. But this time, I found just diced tomatoes on, on sale, so I got those instead. All righty. Next thing you're gonna need is a packet of Hidden Valley Ranch dressing mix. I buy it in bulk because it's cheaper that way, but you don't have to. If you bought it in bulk, your measurement is two tablespoons of Hidden Valley Ranch dressing mix. Two tablespoons. And the last thing you need is a package of taco seasoning. Now, I um, have this one left over from a taco dinner kit because we also buy taco seasoning in bulk. And if you're using taco seasoning in bulk, you're going to put two tablespoons of that. But you got one packet of taco seasoning mix. Alrighty. And literally, this is everything that goes in the pot. And you can see that makes a big old pot of soup. You can see all that soup up in there. Now, we're going to give that a good stir with a spoon. Usually I have all my utensils out, but today is not that day. All right, we're going to give that a nice big stir in that pot. Get all that seasoning mixed in there. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put this pot on to a burner. And you're going to bring it on up to a boil. And after you've boiled it, you're going to reduce that down to a simmer for 30 minutes. Now, I know I have some working moms out there and working dads who are uh, going to be cooking this. And this makes a homemade soup that tastes like you cooked it all day in less, than, in less than 45 minutes. You see how fast it was to get it in that pot. And look at all that goodness. You can see the corn and the beans and tomatoes. Whew, already smelling good. This is a favorite around my house and has been for years and years. 
I originally got this recipe from um, the wonderful lunch ladies at Walker Elementary in Walker, Louisiana. Those beautiful ladies would be cooking that in the mornings when I would stop by there in between my morning rounds. And uh, I'd smell it cooking and it just made me crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, what are y'all cooking? Is it tacos? And they said, no, it's taco soup. And I was like, taco soup. And they were like, yep, it sounds strange, but it's so good. And we've even pared down the recipe to eat it at home. Well, about a month later, they came back out and they came out with one of the little styrofoam bowls like what they used on their lunch plates. And it was about a quarter full of taco soup, enough to get about three or four good bites. And uh, they had brought me out taco soup. And they said, it's better once it cooks for a little while, but they brought it out to me and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this recipe. And they gave me this recipe. I went home after going to the grocery store and uh, picked up all the ingredients, went home and my kids asked me, what are we having for dinner tonight? I said, taco soup. They said, wait a minute, taco soup like we have at school? I said, yeah, uh-huh. Where'd you get the recipe? From the lunch ladies. At our school? No. I said, okay, well, hopefully it'll come out good. I said, I hope so, we'll see. And I cooked it up. Well, the next time I said I, made, I was making taco soup, they told me, hold on, I'm gonna call so-and-so and see if they can come over. I ended up with four teenagers in my living room and had to make twice as much soup because there were gonna be no leftovers. So this one is a crowd favorite. You can serve this any time of year, but it being fall and starting to get toward soup and stew time, I figured this was a good recipe to share with everyone. So, right now we've got our pot coming up to a bowl, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it down to a simmer after it comes up to its bowl, and we'll come back in just a little while and show you it all plated. All right, guys, hang tight. Okay, folks, so our soup is already simmered for 30 minutes. Now, one thing I did forget to tell you before I took that break was make sure you put a lid on it while it simmers. That way you keep as much liquid in that pot as possible. Now, if you want a thicker soup, you can leave that lid off, but it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to cook because the heat isn't contained. So, let's get a bowl of this plated up and see what, what it looks like. Now remember, we put all that corn and pinto beans and tomatoes and got a pound of ground beef in there. And I'm gonna tell you, this soup disappears so fast around my house, I can barely even put it put leftovers in that fridge. So, this is what it looks like. And boy, it smells good. See all those veggies in there? Now, the way we plate this up is we put on the top of this a good handful of shredded cheese. Ooh, look at that pound, big old mound of cheese. All right, so we got a big old pile of shredded cheese. And then the best part about it, now remember if your sour cream is uh, separated, all you gotta do is stir that liquid back into it and it's perfectly fine. I just opened this container and you know how you always have that liquid in the top? Stir that back down in, don't pour that off. You want it to be sour cream and not yogurt. All right, guys. Big old dollop of sour cream in the middle. Oh, we need more sour cream than that. All right, now we're talking. Look at it starting to sink down in there. And trust me, when you get a big old spoonful of this, it will be delicious. All right, guys. The only other thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to serve this with some... Um, tortilla chips, 
Um, usually I use Tostitos, not sponsored, but just mentioning. Um, you can use Scoops, you can use flat ones, you can use any brand that makes you happy. There are several that um, I enjoy. If you want to cut that salt down a little bit, because Tostitos does have a lot of sodium, you can cut it down by using uh, on-the-border chips. Those, uh, you can find them in Walmart or whatever your local grocery store is. They probably have them. But they're a little less sodium than the Tostitos. If you don't care about all that, load her down with cheese, load her down with sour cream, get you some chips, and sit down to a good meal. Well, that's all for tonight. Now, if you haven't had a chance to, give us a subscribe, maybe even a like, and uh, come back and see us. Our next episode, and we're actually going to film that one tonight after we finish eating this great soup, is going to be what I call cookie nom noms. They are tea cake style chocolate chip cookies. And I put pecans in mine, but my wife does not care for that. So I'll be making it two ways, one with and one without. All right, guys. And if you haven't had a chance, go back and take a look at some of our other recipes. We've got Mongolian beef up there, French bread pizza. We have uh, chicken breast stuffed two ways. And we also have um, harvest bread pudding. Trust me, that one is a, it is a killer recipe. All right, guys. Thank you again for joining us. Come back and see us soon. Stay well, be blessed, and I hope you have a good week. Thank you. Save a place for me.